The creation of Israel is one of the 21st centuries or the 20th centuries uh, grossest acts because it's been responsible for the deaths of tens of thousands of people that have and the theft of their land and it's still going on and and the West says and does nothing. Normally when we have an apartheid regime like South Africa there's an, eventually a galvanization of the establishment to say look you'll have to behave yourselves it's got a bit out of hand you know, because Barclays were the main uh, supporters of the, uh, the, the apartheid regime in South, America, in South Africa. British Bank you know, and the British establishment owned huge tracts of land. So, um, but it became politically intolerable. They were told to <clears throat> get your act in order. We can't carry on supporting this apartheid regime anymore. It's becoming too unpopular. And that's what happened. So that the British allowed them to release Mandela and create a, a a democratic state, <clears throat> but the um, the creation of the wealth of Judaism or Zionism is based upon the fact that usury was demonised by Christianity, uh, which included Catholicism and, and Orthodox Christianity. Uh, and also Islam. The Islamic religion and all the Western religions demonize usury because Jesus Christ apparently had said, you know, it's wrong to charge interest on the money you lend. And the Islamic Bank still don't charge interest on the money you lend, you know, which is why they won't allow Islamic banking to exist over here because it would destroy our banking system two or three hundred years, which is why the Rothschilds and people like that are so fabulously rich, is because Judaism permitted usury. And the sloth-like ruling classes of this country thought, well, this is a way I'll never have to work. If I invest my money, I, get, I earn money from my money, which is the f that had not happened hitherto. But Judaism allowed it, which is why Jewish bankers became fabulously rich and have still got a huge ground base. That created the, uh, the dynasties, the Rothschilds and the banking dynasties that exist. Um, and Lord Balfour, who was a, a Jewish uh, English lord, landed gentry, uh, decided that we ought to have a home for the Jewish people. Uh, Madagascar was looked at. You know, we nearly did because after the Versailles Treaty in 1919, we owned Palestine, we owned Madagascar, we owned most of the the assets that had been owned by the German or the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the allies of the Germans, or the Ottoman Empire, which was also collapsed in 1919, 1918. <clears throat> they all collapsed together, and we in, we were the main inheritors of those decimated uh, uh, um, colonial powers. And we decided to give a home to the Jewish people who were fabulously rich, and, and I've explained how they got that wealth. So Balfour's recommendation then shipped to this newly acquired, because Balfour's declaration was, I think, 1917. The Versailles Tra Treaty of 1919 created all this extra land which we were given ownership of because of the collapse of the colonial powers. And we decided to give, eventually, to give Palestine to, to the Jewish race. And uh, it wasn't really taken that seriously during the 20s and 30s. Everyone said, yeah, right, eventually we'll get around to it, eventually we'll get around to it. And then in 1945, when the Allies <clears throat> won, in inverted commas, or the, the Russians won, the poverty-stricken hordes of Jewish people that survived the, the gas chambers all wanted to go to the States, millions of them. So let's get out of Europe, it's anti-Semitic, we want to go to the States. The States said, American Jewish 
establishment in America said, look, we don't want these poverty-stricken people. It'll dilute our privileged position in our this society. Let's put them somewhere else. So they put their money behind the creation of the State of Israel. So that's ostensibly the reason for the establishment of the State of Israel. Now, they, the genocide that they conducted on the, the indigenous population of that country is breathtaking. Not only the slaughter, they evicted millions and, and, uh, and still haven't allowed them back in again. These still stateless people and it, the whole thing is iniquitous. But it's the money that has allowed it to exist for this long. All the wars have been helped by America. See, because the, National, the Federal Reserve in America is privately owned. One would assume that it's state-owned bank, but it's privately owned by the big money people, the Rothschilds, the big people. They own the Federal Reserve, which lends money to the American government. They call the tunes. They call the tune of what the American government is going to do. That's essentially where we are with this lot. And um, unless, uh, but obviously, obviously Western religions realize that, hey, look, we'll have to charge usury. We'll have to permit usury in our religion um, because religion is a, a very fluid thing. You know, in order to maintain that level of commitment by the peasants, they need to change their doctrine every now and again when a piece of new evidence comes up that doesn't fit in with the Bible. like. The 4,000 year old history of the earth had to be changed when Darwin came up with his theories that these fossils you find aren't monsters that died a few thousand years ago. These are seriously old fossils. Anyway, that, so that all changed and that's exactly how it works and religion is a fluid indoctrination of keeping people in, in positions of subservience essentially is what it, its origins of it. Um, which is controversial, and, and I get in a lot of trouble by making those statements, but you, know, there's, you can't see any evidence to the contrary. If, I could, if there was a, a minutest piece of evidence to back up this absurd story, I'd, I'd grasp it, but you know, the, the Egyptians never had slaves, so how do you justify the, the tribes of Israel leaving, Israel, leaving Egypt to get out, out of slavery. There's no record of uh, Egyptians ever having slaves. And how did someone part a sea to get a whole race of people through and then let it all flood over again? I, these facts, I'm told that I need faith, but having faith in, in something that's clearly illogical doesn't make any sense to me, but anyway. Uh, but the creation of Israel is a very important factor as a haven for the money. The, all the money that's used for the Federal Reserve comes from Israel or Switzerland, where you've also got a, is a tax haven. You know, it's no coincidence that Hitler didn't go near Switzerland. He went all around it, you know, but he respected Switzerland, didn't touch Switzerland. You know, even in every other neutral country that said, look, hey, we're neutral, leave us alone, he didn't give a fuck, but Switzerland, oh, and why? Because they got a lot of money. Anyway, um, so that's a program that needs to be made. We need to tell a history of the creation of the State of Israel and why it was done. It's going to be seriously controversial and all the stuff I've done, I did an exploration to the death of Yitzhak Rabin who was killed by a nutter. You know, it's, it's, this, um, it's the lone nutter who is always a scapegoat. Whenever you get something that the state wants to cover up, they'll always say it was the lone nutter who couldn't speak English or didn't speak the language. And it's the same with Yitzhak Rabin's assassination. He was a zealous uh, Zionist who was discontent with the peace process. And it's, it just goes on and on. Um, but it's a very interesting story and it should be told. And it's, um, and it's very relevant, very relevant. You know, this, totally ignoring all the United Nations mandates since the creation of the state. But anyway, but it's 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 a, a program that has to be made and will be made one day.